Doris Day, a name synonymous with the golden age of Hollywood, was an accomplished actress and singer who left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Born Doris Mary Ann Kapelhoff on April 3, 1922, in Cincinnati, Ohio, she began her career as a big band singer before transitioning to acting in the early 1940s. Throughout her illustrious career, Day starred in numerous films and television shows, showcasing her incredible talent and versatility. She first gained widespread recognition for her role in the film Romance on the High Seas in 1948 and went on to appear in classics such as Pillow Talk, Calamity Jane, and The Man Who Knew Too Much. In addition to her work in film, Day also enjoyed a successful career as a singer, releasing over 30 albums and numerous hit singles throughout her lifetime. Her music, which spanned a variety of genres including pop, jazz, and country, remains popular to this day. Despite facing numerous challenges and setbacks throughout her life, Day remained a resilient and positive force in the entertainment industry. She was known for her sunny disposition, infectious laugh, and dedication to her craft. In 1989, Day was awarded the Cecil B. DeMille Award for her outstanding contributions to the world of entertainment. She continued to be an active advocate for animal welfare throughout her later years, using her platform to raise awareness and funds for various animal-related causes. Today, Doris Day's legacy lives on through her timeless films, music, and the countless lives she touched throughout her career. Her impact on the entertainment industry is still felt, and her contributions will continue to be celebrated for generations to come. Doris Day was a beloved actress, singer, and animal rights activist, known for her wholesome image and sunny disposition. She starred in numerous films such as Pillow Talk, Calamity Jane, and The Man Who Knew Too Much. Doris Day also had a successful singing career with hits like K. Sarah, Sarah, and Perhaps, Perhaps, Perhaps. Do you have a favorite Doris Day movie or song? Which work of hers do you hold closest to your heart? Out of her many legendary performances, which one do you believe defined her career? We all have our own cherished memories and personal experiences related to this classic star. We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. And get ready to learn some fun, shocking, and even sad facts about Doris Day. From her humble beginnings to her rise to fame, there's so much to discover about this iconic actress. So keep watching. Transitioning into Doris Day's story, we take a look at her humble beginnings. Born as Virginia Mary Hedder in 1922 in a small town, Day's family life shaped her early passions. Her father, a music store owner, exposed her to music from an early age, sparking a love for singing. Her mother encouraged Doris to pursue her talent, often listening to her sing at family gatherings. At school, Doris joined the drama club, where she discovered a knack for the stage. Teachers like Miss Patmount and Mistress Frost saw her potential, nurturing her acting skills through their guidance. These mentors played a crucial role in fostering her confidence and teaching her discipline, which laid the foundation for her illustrious career. During her teenage years, Doris would often perform in local theater productions, further refining her craft. A turning point came when she won a talent contest at a Hollywood radio station, catching the attention of band leader Les Haddon, who offered her a job with his band, the Doris Day Band. This opportunity not only propelled her into the entertainment industry, but also set her on the path that led to Hollywood stardom. Through a chain of fortunate events and the hard work of dedicated mentors, Doris Day's early influences laid the groundwork for the legendary actress and singer we remember today. Doris Day, an actress who became a symbol of wholesome American womanhood, graced both the big and small screens for several decades. She began her film career in 1948 with Romance on the High Seas, a musical comedy that showcased her singing talents. This classic established her as a bankable star and paved the way for more roles. In the 1950s, Day became a household name with her appearances in films like Calamity Jane, a musical western, and Lover Come Back a romantic comedy co-starring Rock Hudson. Her on-screen chemistry with Hudson led to several successful collaborations, including Pillow Talk and Send Me No Flowers. These films, filled with witty banter and screwball antics, remain must-watch movies for fans of classic Hollywood. For those new to today's work, The Pajama Game is an excellent starting point. This romantic musical comedy, based on the Broadway play of the same name, features Day as a labor union activist who falls in love with the new factory superintendent. The film highlights Day's singing and acting abilities, making it a perfect introduction to her work. Another must-watch film is Please Don't Eat the Daisies, a family comedy about a New York City drama critic who moves his family to the suburbs. 
Day's portrayal of a devoted wife and mother navigating the challenges of suburban life resonates with audiences even today. In conclusion, Doris Day's filmography includes many classics that showcase her talent and versatility. Whether you're a fan of musicals, romantic comedies, or family films, Day's work offers something for everyone. As a young girl, Doris Day found joy in singing and dancing around her family's home. She would often perform for relatives during holiday gatherings. Her grandmother recognized the actress's talent early on and encouraged her to take voice lessons. At the age of 15, she started performing professionally on local radio shows in Cincinnati, Ohio. This marked the start of her lifelong love for entertaining audiences through song and dance. Later, while working as a big band singer, she caught the eye of legendary filmmaker Michael Curtises, who cast her in Romance on the High Seas. Although hesitant initially, the actress embraced this new opportunity wholeheartedly. During production, it became evident that she had a natural flair for acting, which led to many more starring roles over the years. A defining moment came when she played Calamity Jane alongside Howard Keel in the eponymous musical film. Despite initial apprehension due to its unglamorous role, Day threw herself into learning horse riding and mastering the tomboy character. Critics praised her performance, solidifying her status as a talented leading lady capable of tackling diverse roles. Her success didn't stop at movies. In the late 50s, the actress began hosting the Doris Day show, proving her versatility beyond cinema. Even after retiring from show business, she continued advocating for animals, further cementing her place as an icon cherished by generations. In Romance on the High Seas, the actress Doris Day, initially thinking it was a prank call, hung up on Jack Carson. Hours later, she was surprised to find Carson at her door, still asking her to be in the film. Moving on to the thrill of it all, Day was not the first choice for the role of Beverly Boye. Both she and James Garner, her co-star, had been second choices for this film and for Something's Gotta Give, where Monroe had initially wanted Garner as her co-star. Finally, in Pillow Talk, Day and Hudson, despite never being romantically involved, formed a strong friendship. From the moment they met, a mutual respect and playful sense of humor became the foundation of their on-screen chemistry. Born Doris Marianne Kappelhoff in 1922, this future actress endured her share of hardships before achieving stardom. Growing up in Cincinnati, Ohio, she experienced financial struggles during the Great Depression. Despite these challenging times, she developed a love for dance and music, which eventually led to her pursuit of a career in entertainment. Rejection was common for this determined artist. In the early days of her career, she encountered industry skepticism and numerous setbacks. After a car accident ended her dreams of becoming a professional dancer, she turned to singing. However, even then, success did not come easily. She struggled to find work and was often told she lacked the star quality needed to make it big. But this talented individual refused to give up. With persistence and determination, she continued honing her craft and seeking out new opportunities. Eventually, she caught her big break when she began performing alongside popular band leaders like Les Brown. Her unique voice and captivating stage presence quickly gained attention, leading to recording contracts and radio appearances. The road to fame wasn't always smooth for this actress. When she made the leap to acting, she again faced criticism and doubt from industry insiders who questioned her ability to succeed on the silver screen. Yet, time and time again, she proved them wrong by delivering standout performances in films like Pillow Talk, Calamity Jane and Love Me or Leave Me. Her resilience and unwavering dedication to her art form inspired many aspiring performers who also faced adversity. Through creativity, talent, and sheer willpower, she overcame obstacles and solidified her place as a beloved figure in Hollywood history. In the film That Touch of Mink, Doris Day, playing Kathy Timberlake, had a minor conflict with co-star Cary Grant. Both preferred their right profile for close-ups, but only one profile could be used. Grant conceded, allowing Day to have her preferred profile. In Calamity Jane, Day had to alter her natural singing voice to achieve a gruffer sound for the lead character. This change showcased her versatility as a vocalist and actress. Doris Day's significant contributions to the film and recording industries have earned her two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, located at 6,735 Hollywood BLED for motion pictures and 6,278 Hollywood BLED for recording. These accolades highlight her enduring impact on entertainment. After years of success as a singer, Doris Day made her acting debut in 1948's Romance on the High Seas. Critics were quick to note her natural comedic timing and relatable charm. 
This performance marked the start of a prolific film career for the actress. A few years later, she starred alongside James Stewart in the Alfred Hitchcock thriller, The Man Who Knew Too Much in 1956. Notably, Day performed the song Que Sera, Syria, which went on to win an Academy Award for Best Original Song and became a signature tune for the actress. Her role in 1959's Pillow Talk brought Doris Day further acclaim, earning her a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress, Comedy or Musical. Co-star Rock Hudson praised Day's ability to balance grace and humor, stating, she had an unmatched knack for making audiences laugh while still being utterly captivating. Another breakthrough moment came when Day took on more dramatic roles, including the lead in 1960's Midnight Lace, where she portrayed a woman terrorized by threatening phone calls. Though initially hesitant to tackle heavier material, Day proved herself capable of exploring complex emotions and situations. Throughout her illustrious career, the actress garnered numerous accolades, solidifying her status as a Hollywood legend. Her contributions to both music and cinema continue to resonate today, leaving behind a lasting legacy for future generations to enjoy. Transitioning to the facts about the actress, in the film Lover Comeback, Doris Day portrayed Carol Templeton. Sadly, Doris Day passed away on May 13, 2019, leaving none of the credited cast members alive. Moving on to Romance on the High Seas, Doris Day played Georgia Garrett. Her career intersected with Janice Page three times, with Page being replaced by Day in the Pajama Game film adaptation. In The Doris Day Show, Doris Day starred as Doris Martin. Critics humorously noted Day's recurring role as a widow, sparking sarcastic inquiries about her character's deceased husbands. Doris Day, an actress who became a symbol of wholesome American womanhood, brought a unique blend of warmth, humor, and vulnerability to her roles. Her approach to acting was grounded in her own life experiences, which lent authenticity to her performances. Day's naturalness on screen was no accident. She once said, I've always believed that what you are comes across to the audience. You can't fool them. This philosophy informed her acting process, which emphasized staying true to her own personality and emotions. One of the key elements of Day's style was her ability to convey a wide range of emotions with subtlety and nuance. She could play comedy and drama with equal skill, often switching between the two within a single scene. This versatility was evident in her many film roles, from the light-hearted musicals she starred in during the 1950s to the more serious dramas of the 1960s. Day's personal experiences also influenced her work. Growing up during the Great Depression, she developed a deep empathy for ordinary people struggling to make ends meet. This empathy was reflected in many of her film roles, such as her portrayal of a single mother trying to provide for her child in Pillow Talk. Day's worldview was also shaped by her experiences as a working woman in a male-dominated industry. She was one of the few actresses of her time to run her own production company, and she fought for equal pay and creative control throughout her career. This feminist perspective was evident in many of her films, which often challenged traditional gender roles and stereotypes. In short, Doris Day's artistic vision and process were deeply rooted in her own life experiences and worldview. Her unique blend of warmth, humor, and vulnerability, combined with her subtle emotional range and feminist perspective, made her one of the most beloved actresses of her time. In the 1956 film Julie, Doris Day takes on the role of Julie Benton. Interestingly, Doris Day's mother, Alma Sophia von Kappelhoff, makes a brief appearance in the film, playing cards with Barry Sullivan at the golf course clubhouse. In a notable twist, when Doris Day opted not to sing the Oscar-nominated theme song of the film at the 1957 Academy Awards, it was performed instead by Dorothy Dandridge. Moving on to Lover Come Back, another classic, Doris Day plays the character of Carol Templeton. The film is known for its use of soft focus and close-up shots of Doris Day, adding to her on-screen charm. These are just a few examples of Doris Day's impact on classic Hollywood. Her ability to captivate audiences and leave a lasting impression is a testament to her talent and enduring legacy. Doris Day, an actress who brought joy and laughter to many through her work, left an indelible mark on the film industry. Her performances often revolved around innocent and optimistic characters, which resonated deeply with audiences. This charm extended beyond films, reaching television screens in The Doris Day Show. A significant aspect of Day's legacy lies in her influence on female representation in Hollywood. She portrayed strong, independent women navigating various challenges, paving the way for future generations of actresses. 
As Betty White, another iconic actress, said, she was the big, bright, shining star, the ultimate queen of comedy. Moreover, Day contributed significantly to music, recording numerous hit songs throughout her career. Many musicians acknowledge her impact, like singer-songwriter K.D. Lang, who admires Day's ability to blend vulnerability and strength into one captivating performance. Day also advocated for animal rights later in life. Through her organization, the Doris Day Animal Foundation, she raised awareness and funds to support neglected animals across the country, further solidifying her positive influence outside of entertainment. Ultimately, Doris Day's sunny disposition and relatable characters have made a lasting impression on both the film industry and popular culture. In the film Lover Comeback, Doris Day played the character Carol Templeton. Sadly, around a year and a half after the completion of this film, the costume designer, Irene, who was twice Oscar nominated, took her own life by jumping off the roof of the Knickerbocker Hotel in Hollywood. Doris Day, in her 1975 autobiography, speculated that Irene's suicide might have been triggered by her unrequited love for Gary Cooper, who had recently passed away from cancer. Doris Day was also considered for the role of Jessica Fletcher in the show Murder, she wrote, but she declined due to her retirement from acting, which had already lasted for over a decade. In the thrill of it all, Doris Day portrayed Beverly Boyer. At that time, she was the top box office star worldwide, while James Garner was still in the early stages of his film career and was primarily known for his work in television. However, their on-screen chemistry was so strong that they decided to collaborate again on another romantic comedy, Move Over Darling, which was also a major hit. Both films contributed to keeping Doris Day at the top of the box office stars chart and significantly boosted James Garner's career. Doris Day was known for her love of animals and dedicated much of her time outside of acting to advocating for animal rights. She even started the Doris Day Animal Foundation, which supports various programs and organizations aimed at improving the welfare of animals. This passion for animals often found its way into her films, such as Pillow Talk, where she shared scenes with a lovable dog named Dynamite. The actress also enjoyed singing and had a successful music career alongside her film roles. Her interest in music can be traced back to her childhood, where she began performing professionally at a young age. Many of her movies featured memorable musical numbers, allowing her to combine both her passions, acting, and singing. Apart from entertainment, Doris Day believed in leading a healthy lifestyle and promoting fitness. In her later years, she hosted exercise shows on television, encouraging people to stay active and maintain good health. These personal values were reflected in her own life, as she remained energetic and youthful throughout her golden years. Throughout her life, the actress demonstrated a commitment to making a difference by supporting various charitable causes beyond animal welfare. She used her platform to raise awareness for issues close to her heart, leaving behind a legacy that extends far beyond her impressive body of work in Hollywood. Even today, fans continue to cherish her contributions to cinema and admire her dedication to making the world a better place. After the tragic passing of her Pillow Talk co-star Rock Hudson in 1985 due to AIDS, Doris Day revealed to the press that she had been unaware of his homosexuality. In the film Send Me No Flowers, Hudson appeared as her spouse, but his youthful appearance, being 38 while Day was 42, raised some eyebrows. Later, during the final years of the Doris Day show on CBS, the actress became disenchanted with the uninspired scripts and situations presented by her writers. As a result, she often chose to focus on filming extensive fashion show sequences instead of concentrating on guest stars or dialogue. This classic series, like many others, underwent changes throughout its five-year run. Initially, Day portrayed a widowed mother living in the country with her father and sons. However, by the third season, the setting shifted to San Francisco, where Day became a single career woman working at a publishing company. Towards the end of the series, the actress's dissatisfaction with the insipid storylines became apparent, leading to her preference for fashion-centric episodes. Doris Day, the actress known for her lively spirit and powerful voice, left an indelible mark on the film and music industries. Her legacy includes a range of classic films such as Pillow Talk and Calamity Jane, as well as numerous hit songs like K Sarah, Sarah. Despite facing many challenges as a woman in the industry, she paved the way for future generations with her talent and determination. For those aspiring to follow in her footsteps, Day offered valuable advice you have to believe in yourself and what you're doing. If you don't, no one else will. 
She emphasized the importance of staying true to oneself and one's values, even in the face of adversity. As for the future, Day's legacy continues to inspire and influence new generations of performers. The actress herself once said, I'd like to be remembered as a decent human being and a person who enjoyed life. And that's exactly how she will be remembered as a talented and kind individual who brought joy to countless audiences. In terms of future contributions, the industry can learn from Day's unwavering dedication to her craft and her commitment to using her platform for good. By continuing to uplift and support diverse voices, the industry can honor Day's legacy and create a more inclusive and equitable space for all. In the end, Doris Day's impact on the entertainment industry is undeniable. Her talent, grace, and resilience continue to resonate with audiences today, and her legacy will undoubtedly endure for generations to come. After portraying Babe Williams in the Pajama Game musical, both Doris Day and Janice Page went on to play the character in the Broadway production and the feature film adaptation, respectively. In the 1952 film Julie, Doris Day's on-screen relationship with Louis Jordan eerily mirrors her real-life experience with her first husband, trombonist Al Jordan. Day revealed that Jordan often verbally and physically abused her, even during her pregnancy with her son, Terry Melcher. Born to German-born parents in Ohio, Doris Day, whose real name is Doris Kapelhoff, is the daughter of William and Alma Kapelhoff. Raised in a close-knit family, Day's upbringing in Ohio played a significant role in shaping her personality and career. Despite facing numerous challenges in her personal life, Doris Day continued to shine as a talented actress and singer, delivering memorable performances in various films and shows. Her contributions to the entertainment industry remain a testament to her resilience and dedication to her craft. Doris Day began her career in the early 1940s as a big band singer before transitioning to acting. She quickly became a beloved figure in Hollywood with her girl next door charm and impressive vocal abilities. Over several decades, she starred in numerous films and TV shows, including Pillow Talk, Calamity Jane, and The Doris Day Show. Her performances were marked by grace, humor, and authenticity, making her one of the most popular actresses of her time. Day was also known for her advocacy work. In addition to being a passionate animal rights activist, she used her platform to speak out against issues like sexism and ageism in the entertainment industry. Despite facing various challenges throughout her career, she remained committed to her craft and continued to innovate, proving herself to be a trailblazer who paved the way for future generations of performers. Throughout her life, Doris Day embodied resilience, determination, and a deep love for her art. Her contributions to the entertainment industry continue to resonate today, serving as a testament to the power of creativity and perseverance. So, let us take inspiration from this classic icon and remember that even in the face of adversity, we too can make our mark on the world. In Ringo Starr's last top 40 hit, Ala Dada, released in 1999, Doris Day's name is notably referenced in every chorus. But did you know that the actress also played the lead role in Julie, the second film produced by Arwen Productions? This production company was jointly owned by Day and her husband, Martin Melcher, who served as the film's producer for his debut project. Interestingly, during the making of Julie, Day developed a close bond with her co-star, Louis Jordan. However, this friendly relationship seemed to provoke the jealousy of her possessive spouse, which eerily echoed their real-life dynamics with those of their respective characters in the movie. Despite these tensions behind the scenes, the film remains a beloved classic among fans of both the actress and the French actor today. Doris Day, in The Doris Day Show, was portrayed by the actress herself. Interestingly, her manager and third husband, Martin Melcher, who had negotiated the contract for the show's creation, received an executive producer credit for the show's entire first season, posthumously. In Love Me or Leave Me, Day starred as Ruth Edding, impressing co-star James Cagney with her vocal and acting skills. Despite Cagney's admiration and an Oscar nomination for the film, the Academy overlooked Day's performance. Many, including Alfred Hitchcock, considered this her finest dramatic role, leading to her casting in The Man Who Knew Too Much alongside James Stewart. While filming The Man Who Knew Too Much, Day, as Josephine Conway McKenna, became anxious about Hitchcock's focus on technical aspects, believing he was dissatisfied with her performance. After confronting him, Hitchcock reassured her, if you weren't giving me what I wanted, then I would have to direct you. Doris Day, a celebrated actress, was known for her strong support of President Ronald Reagan, forging a close friendship during his tenure. 
in her 1975 memoir, she favored the role of Ruth, adding in the film Love Me or Leave Me as her best performance. The movie captivated audiences with her portrayal, and those who worked alongside her often remarked on the uncanny resemblance between the on-screen dynamics of Ruth and her real-life relationship with husband manager Marty Melcher. Industry insiders pointed out the striking similarities between Marty Cagney's portrayal and the control exerted in the movie, adding an interesting layer to the story. Day's performance, both in the film and in her personal life, left a lasting impression on the cinematic landscape. In The Doris Day Show, the actress's husband and manager, Martin Melcher, had previously secured a deal with the Chrysler Corporation. This partnership resulted in every contemporary vehicle showcased in the series being a Chrysler product. Doris Day's experience working with Cary Grant on That Touch of Mink was described as professional but distant. In her autobiography, she mentioned that Grant was a private person who focused on every detail of their scenes together, including the mink she wore in the film. Before Doris Day was cast in Romance on the High Seas, the role was initially refused by Judy Garland, Catherine Grayson, and Lauren Bacall. The film marked the beginning of Day's successful career in Hollywood. In the film Send Me No Flowers, the actress playing Judy shares the same maiden name as her character, Kappelhoff. Coincidentally, the actress's real name is Doris Kappelhoff, better known as Doris Day. When it comes to the Doris Day show, the actress made a wise decision that ensured the show's survival during a significant shift in TV programming. As many rural sitcoms got canceled, she moved the setting of her show from a farm to San Francisco, allowing it to continue airing successfully. Interestingly, before Calamity Jane, Warner Brothers had attempted to acquire the movie rights to Annie Get Your Gun. After failing, they created their own Western musical inspired by another famous figure named Calamity Jane, casting Howard Keel, who had previously played the lead role in Annie Get Your Gun. Years later, Warner gained the rights to Annie Get Your Gun when they merged with Turner Entertainment, which owned much of MGM's existing library. The Doris Day Show, starring the actress as Doris Martin, didn't initially perform well in ratings during its first season, ranking only 30th among over 125 series. However, a significant change occurred in the second season when the plotline shifted to San Francisco, leaving behind the previous rural storylines. Along with the change in location, the show was moved to Mondays and aired after Here's Lucy, leading to a substantial improvement in ratings. By the end of the season, it had become America's 10th most watched series. In the film Young Man with a Horn, Doris Day portrayed Joe Jordan alongside Kirk Douglas. Despite their real-life friendship, the actors found Douglas difficult to work with. However, co-star Rock Hudson had a different experience and often referred to her as Eunice, a name that amused him. In summary, Doris Day's career included a variety of roles, from the Doris Day show to films like Young Man with a Horn. Despite facing challenges, she continued to work alongside notable co-stars, leaving a lasting impact on audiences. In Romance on the High Seas, the actress Doris Day was cast as Georgia Garrett. Early in the film's production, Day was embarrassed by her performance and sought a drama coach's advice. However, director Michael Curtis advised her against it, stating that her natural talent was what made her special. Interestingly, Day's casting in the film was a result of a series of fortunate events. Initially, Warner Ace director Michael Curtises owed the government $350,000 in back taxes, and the studio set him up in his own production company. Betty Hutton had to bow out of the film, and composer Jules Stein suggested Day for the role. Despite the studio's initial rejection of Day due to a bad screen test, producer Henry Blank supervised the second test, which was successful. When Stein threatened to use Day in his own picture, Curtises agreed to cast her. Later, after a 10-year absence from film, Day returned to work with costume designer Irene at the request of her friend Day. This classic film is a testament to Day's natural talent and the faith that those around her had in her abilities. In Midnight Lace, Day played the role of Kit Preston. This film marked her return to the big screen after a decade-long absence. The film's costume designer, Irene, was a close friend of Day and had worked with her on previous films. With Irene's help, Day delivered a memorable performance in this classic thriller. In the film Calamity Jane, Doris Day sings the Deadwood stage, which includes the line will be home tonight by the light of the silvery moon. Interestingly, the same year saw Day starring in by the light of the silvery moon. Following its release, a Columbia Records album featured songs both from the movie soundtrack and some newly recorded ones by Day herself. A treat for her fans.
Later, she shared screen time with Rock Hudson and Tony Randall in three movies Pillow Talk, Lover Come Back, and Send Me No Flowers. Each story cast them as romantic interests, while Randall took up the role of Hudson's confidant each time. These successful collaborations contributed significantly to Doris Day's cinematic legacy. This actress's work extends beyond these memorable flicks. Her impact can still be felt today through various means like remastered albums and revived performances. Indeed, even now, audiences continue to appreciate and enjoy what she brought to entertainment during her career peak. In the film Move Over, Darling, the actress Doris Day portrayed Ellen Wagstaff Arden. A notable scene shows Day and Chuck Connors playfully interacting on a South Seas island, reminiscent of Adam and Eve among coconut trees. This scene is a tamer version of Marilyn Monroe's notorious pool scene in the original film, where she appeared fully nude to entice her husband. During the filming of Julie, Doris Day experienced persistent illness, but was encouraged by her husband, Martin Melcher, to adhere to her Christian science beliefs and the production schedule. After filming, she discovered a large ovarian tumor, which led to a hysterectomy. The Doris Day Show, in which the actress played Doris Martin, set a contract record with CBS. Doris Day's production company received several million dollars up front, negotiated by Melcher. However, after Melcher's sudden death, Day learned she had no knowledge of signing on to the show. Melcher and the couple's lawyer and financial advisor had squandered her fortune, leaving her broke and in debt. Melcher had contracted the show without her consent, desperate for money. In the film Move Over, Darling, Doris Day, in the role of Ellen Wagstaff Arden, is featured in the main title song, which was co-written by her only child, Terry Melcher. Melcher was a successful producer, an A&R man for Columbia Records, with albums by the Beach Boys and the Yardbirds among his credits. Despite Doris Day's immense popularity at the time, Polly Bergen, who acted alongside her in Move Over, Darling, initially had doubts about playing a supporting role. However, Bergen quickly grew fond of Day, praising her as charming, amusing, and generous. In Teacher's Pet, another classic film, Doris Day portrayed Erica Stone, a journalism professor. While filming, Day received the Golden Flame Award from the California Association of Press Women for her cooperation with the press. This recognition further solidified her reputation as a professional and cooperative actress. In her debut film, Romance on the High Seas, Doris Day made an impression at the 1949 Academy Awards. Though she sang the hit song It's Magic, the Best Song Award went to Buttons and Bows. Later, James Cagney recommended Day for the lead role in Love Me or Leave Me, where she portrayed Ruth Edding. Their collaboration began earlier in the West Point story. One notable early performance of Doris Day was in Young Man with a Horn. As Joe Jordan, she demonstrated dramatic skills, leading director Michael Curtisis to suggest her for a serious role in Storm Warning, playing Ginger Rogers' younger sister. This marked a significant turn in Day's career, challenging her acting range beyond musical roles. Through these diverse performances, the actress continued to grow and captivate audiences. As one of the most beloved actresses in Hollywood, Doris Day brought joy to many through her work. With a career spanning over three decades, she starred in films such as Pillow Talk and Please Don't Eat the Daisies, where she showcased her comedic talents. She also proved herself to be a capable dramatic actress, earning critical acclaim for her performances in movies like Love Me or Leave Me. But it wasn't just acting that made Doris Day shine. She was also known for her singing voice. In fact, before becoming an actress, she had already found success as a singer. Her hits include classics like Que Sera, Sarah, which became an iconic theme song for this classic actress. As we celebrate Doris Day's life and contributions to the entertainment industry, let us know what you think about her work and legacy in the comments below. Share your favorite memories, moments, or even specific scenes from her films that resonated with you. Your insights could spark meaningful conversations among fellow fans who appreciate this talented artist. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed our tribute to Doris Day and please consider sharing it with others so they too can join the discussion. And while you're here, why not subscribe to our channel for more content dedicated to celebrating the creative spirits who have shaped entertainment. We look forward to hearing your thoughts.